Andrew McCart, IFL TV, in association with MTK Global. I'm here in Belfast for MTK Fight Night. With me, I've got MTK's own Jamie Conlon. Jamie, what a night. Unbelievable. Just break it down for me. What a bill. <laughs> what a, from top to bottom, it was it's a fantastic bill. Even like a complete upset until McGoldrick getting knocked out in the first round. Paddy Gall stopping Liam Wells in three rounds. Lewis Cracker, I thought, was brilliant, even though he didn't get the knockout. <laughs> Against a former world title or former opponent who beat a former world champion, um, tough Frenchman should have been eight rounds, but the board changed at the six at the last second. But it, like from top to bottom, the, the undercard was quality. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to see, I, I believe, one of the best prospects in Ireland, and Lewis Carter coming through and taking another step forward in his career. Um, Paddy Gall reigniting his career yeah, back yeah, again yeah. against taking a big risk both lads took a really big risk Liam Wells and Paddy Gall both uh, Liam Wells didn't need Paddy Gall in his sixth fight mm -hmm. but Paddy Gall came back to need I, I think against the odds and and looked very very good at it hopefully a big fight soon for himself and then the the, the two mains was was quality I thought Stephen mm -hmm. Ward's fight was hard to see anything too else this year time that the too blood was covered in blood here but it's a it was, no one can call Stephen Ward born no more. No, no, no. no, no. no one can call him born. What a fight. What can we call him? I, I need know. to think of something. <laughs> I was going to say Baldy, but you couldn't. But <laughs> I've got that. <laughs> <laughs> but what a fight. Um, and McKenna. McKenna, McKenna was brilliant. Time. McKenna was brilliant. He boxed tonight for the first time. I'd seen him properly in a fight boxing. I thought he lost maybe two of the first three rounds, but then got his act together and uh, he got cut and I think woke him up and he stayed on the outside, controlled the distance. He was just giving away space too much mm -hmm. in the in the early rounds and was caught between a clash of stages. He, he wanted the fight and he wanted he was getting tailed to stay away. So he was getting caught in a, in, in a clash, and, clash of stages and, and that's where he was Lo or losing the early rounds, but when he when he turned it on and found his rhythm, found his pace, found found his flow, found his distance, he, he, I think it was pretty handy in the end. And I had it seven three, seven three to Tyrone, and then maybe a knockdown included, and then a knockdown included. So it was pretty good. Well. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, on up, he's on up, on up, on up. Yeah, on up. Yeah, on up. But it was it was a quality fight. I, I think more. Conroy, I think it'd be good to see it again, maybe not from Stephen Moore's yeah, point yeah, of view, but it was yeah. what a fight. I think could have went either way early in the fight. First three rounds was crazy. And then after that how do you I didn't expect that to be a war against Conroy. I, I, I thought it'd be a good fight. I didn't expect all the blood and the knockdowns and the Really oh, didn't. So didn't Jamie Moore had said earlier in the day he thinks it was gonna be a war war. And I thought he was just saying that but I thought the game plan was always going to be keep it long, mm -hmm. nice boxing at a distance, in and out at range, um, control it with the jab. But he was he, he was getting in, trying to get the left hook on after the right hand of the body. Then he was pulling out straight in, the, in a straight lane and getting caught with the left hook from Conroy. It was great fight, fantastic fight. No one expected it. The, the, the atmosphere was phenomenal behind it. Everyone had the rally behind Stephen Ward and it was great to see it. it was, it was a, a, a fantastic card. I, I haven't seen a card as good from top to bottom. That's what I was going to say. It's this is the reason why people should tune into MTK Fight Nights because it's not quantity, it's quality, yeah, isn't it? We only had yeah. maybe what six, seven fights on the bill, was it? Yeah, yeah. And like I said, you said there was an upside with Taylor McGoldrick getting stopped in the first round. You had Owen O'Neill as well. He got rocked in the second of his fight. Oh, Owen O'Neill's fight yeah. opening in the card. You know, yeah. he, he had a tough four rounds. Second round, he, he was gone, but he, instead of trying to hold the box, he stood and trying to fight with the guy. But he, he learned from out there and fair play him. He brought a good crowd from for for a week's notice in, from from the Cliftonville. So f fantastic. He, he, oh, he actually forgot about oh, his fight as well. He, mm. he opened the bill in, in in an absolute war, four round war. So from everything, quality, but quality. yeah, quality. And from the main card on, you know, every, every fight was matched. Mm. I think I said it yesterday that. You don't see as many potential. Not they weren't fifty fifty, but potentially sixty forty yeah, fights. Yeah, the odds weren't like oh, fifty yeah. to one, hundred yeah. to one. They were like they were, you your could typical each fight your typical yeah. matchroom card. Mm -hmm. You don't get that yeah, that the load of shit on the undercard. So it was it was brilliant. It was brilliant to see everyone was getting tested in the right way. You know, fantastic to see one of our prospects come through with flying colours and loose cracker. And now we can we can move him on in another step in the right direction. He's only twenty two years of age, big puncher, but he's starting to learn how to. 
control the pace, control the distance, control himself, not trying to go gung-ho and, and, and go for the knockout all the time. So he's learning on the job, he, he's doing it the right way. I think he's ticking all the boxes going forward. Glasgow tomorrow night, another Gla MTK show. Glasgow tomorrow night, we'll have some upstairs. Oh. Uh -huh. like, I don't think I'm going to get interview Stephen Ward, there's too many people there, is it? Everyone <laughs> seems to be piling up, but he's a likeable guy. Yeah, he's he one of, he just yeah. like a, a I was walking around Belfast and I bumped into him, walking around, and he's like, are you lost? I'm like, no, I'm just taking a wee stroll. Be sat you were lost, weren't you? I was lost. I, I, I got, I've got to find the Europa. Once I get the Europa Hotel, ah, I like, now I'm going to so. And we just sat and talked in the street for 10 minutes. Lovely man, lovely absolutely man. lovely. Like, I've known him since we were, we're in the amateurs together. And he went, I think, to the Fura Games in 2008, maybe, with my brother and my father. And then he'd be very close to the family fr from there on. He was always on the same teams with, with my dad as the coach. And mm -hmm. they also had performance. So it was, it was brilliant to see him tonight getting his first belt. First big test from Conroy had been been mixing it at a higher level with, yeah. with Boatsy and and stuff like that. So this tonight was was Ward's big reckoning night. So he's coming through with I wouldn't You're say flan <laughs> flan colours. The blood the colour was red. red. It was blood. <laughs> yeah. it was a big red. So it was it, it was brilliant to see and brilliant to see from Stevie because he deserved he deserves every every bit of success. Well, I can't like talk. I can not talk about you talked about Mick a little bit there. You said my father and my brother. Mix, big huge show in August there at the Fela Festival. Yeah. Uh, how's that looking? How's tickets and all this sort of stuff and the card and stuff? Ticketmaster were sold out in three hours. You know, we're we're pulling together nearly the full card complete. We've got one one big fight to do with Top Rank, and um, so it's 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 nearly done. We're, we're nearly there. We're. We're, we're slowly but surely ticking, ticking, ticking the days are ticking by. So um, I'm very excited about the card. Uh, I met with Vegas last week, the the, the manager of um, Vladimir Nikitin. They're f they're confident. Their camps flying. Everyone's everyone's geared up to come over. A good Russian contingent coming over from his end. So it's 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 good. We have Russian TV involved. You know, it's it's so it's gonna big, be big. big it's big, yeah. That they're gonna bring a full broadcast, I think, over as well. So we're 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 all guns blazing for for August the third. Tonight we got to enjoy some some absolute wars. We hope for put together. Is it, is it a small taste it's a small taste. I think I think the bill itself the, on the fail will be probably the biggest bill Ireland has ever seen from from top to bottom. It's it's got quality. It's got quantity. It's got everything you need. Um, Mick and the Keaton, the fate itself. Touched the nation, you know. It, it's mm. it gripped everyone. Soon as Rio, soon as he reacted with raw emotion after, yeah. after the fight in Rio, it, it got it, it, everyone just wanted to see it again. You know, I think I remember when Amir Khan fought Mario Kindlin after the yeah, Olympics. Yeah. You know, and that didn't grip anyone. That was an amateur fight. That was an amateur fight, yeah. an amateur fight and then they still done it, yeah. but it was on broadcast on live on yeah, ITV. Yeah. But that was a completely different situation. This. This this raw emotion of uh, of redemption is is ingrained in everyone here in Ireland and especially in West Belfast and the the year long process that we've been going going well, last August process with with Cam Gamble and the Fela about getting this done has been has been amazing really you know because you're getting closer and closer mm -hmm. to getting to see Mick get what he's you know, right the wrong that shouldn't be well, right. that's what I was going to say do you think Mick's had that cloud over him since he's turned pro do you think that now once he well, gets past wrong I, I think unfairly people people remember his amateur career for that yeah. for that loss and for, for for his reaction in Rio but you know if once he gets this over and, and, and done with I think that will all be put to It'll bed off his shoulders sort of thing. not even weighted off his shoulders because to me the fate itself I, I, I hold Mick in a completely higher standard than, than I hold Vladimir Keaton and on August 3rd Mick will prove that for me so um, I think he's always destined for bigger and better things I, I believe world champion is is only the start of what Mick will kind of achieve um, he's starting to come into his own and starting to look, look, look how we believe that he is but no one has seen the finished article and you won't because there's not, he's not meant to make the finished article at this stage of his career he's taking boxes at the right times he's doing things that he's been practicing in the gym but in terms of a, a public perception I'm sure there is a lot of expectations on him 
people don't realise the, the the weight of, of pressure and expectations be on his shoulders on a daily the basis. Nation, the, 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 you know, from the before Rio, when he was the first Irish boxer to ever win a world amateur championship. Yeah. Fucking anyone can win a world title except for me, but anyone. <laughs> and you don't want to yeah. that, but a world title is very easy yeah. to come by in a in a professional game, especially now with these many diluted belts. But to become a world amateur champion is that you're you're solely the best boxer yeah. in the world. Everyone fought the best, fought the best in a competition over about seven days or whatever, and and you come out the best. So to, to achieve that is is harder than any yeah. world title you can achieve. So. That's what he should be reckon his amateur career should be recognised for, and after after uh, August the third, it will be. But after August the third, we'll be looking at big, better fights and pushing on it um, for titles in the, in the new year. I'll look forward to that. But finally, you said you're out in Vegas. I've got touching it. Tyson Fury's fight out in there. Just talk to me about Tyson Fury and the whole spectacle he brought with the Uncle Sam outfit, walk, ring walk, and walk before, and all this sort of stuff. Un unreal. The the whole the whole week, I seen a difference. Eh? The what ESPN the the that they can put behind a fighter and I've never seen a production or promotion like it. It was phenomenal. Top ranking ESPN went above and beyond for, for Fury and Fury then delivered on the night, which I didn't think he would. You know, he's not that kind of aggressive um, fighter. He usually likes to box and pick and pop, poke and, and then wear you down yeah. and maybe get you later on. But he went in for the kill. Once he switched out upon realised that um, Schwartz couldn't couldn't figure out how to how to understand the the, foot, the the position of the foot. He was able to get the backhand of the body off pretty easy, backhand straight down the middle and then uppercut as well. So once he done that, he turned on the, turned it on instead and looked phenomenal. But you seen the the whole promotion, the whole production. People came over from England and they will now. After that, it'll leave it, it'll grow because mm, yeah. ESPN top rank. Everyone was very very happy with how he performed and. And the way it all came together in the end, and the celebs all turned out: Gordon Ramsay, Robbie, Robbie Williams, Williams yeah, and Jamie Sh Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. Uh, it was class, class, class to see, class to be around, and it's very hard to beat that. Number one heavyweight. Oh, I, I always have thought it. You know, he is for me the, the number one heavyweight. I think he's stylistically all wrong for Joshua. Wilder um, and him is un so, un so unpredictable. That's the only way. You know, he can be beaten as by like one of them crazy right hands mm -hmm. or left hooks, but. I, st I still think stylistically he's he's better head and shoulders than all. Right then, we'll just wrap up there then, Jamie. Go and see Steve Moore. Yes, cheers. Let's do it. Right, man. Thanks, Jamie. Yes, Andy. So what are you afraid?